Well, hello. Um, welcome to this um, Facebook Live with me, Emma Rutherford from the Natural Canine Kitchen. And any moment now, Dr. Nick Thompson, the holistic vet, is going to join us to discuss all things um, fresh pet food creation and how we create pet food um, commercially, but without additives and in the fresh food sector. So, Nick, if you're around, would you like to pop on? Hey, Emma. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. We we um we've had some really humid weather. I'm in the UK at the moment, and it's been extremely humid. How about you? Uh, it's it's been really really hot uh, today. I've been sitting outside all day under a canopy in the garden because. I burn like mad. If I even think about the sun, I burn because my uh, uh, Irish, my Irish genes. So it's been a great day. Really, really productive. Started really early this morning. And you did. Um, I, I think you messaged me quite early. Yeah, five, yeah. quarter six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you give yourself not looking at your phone an hour when you wake up, so you were up at like twenty past four. Uh. Uh, I was uh, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit uh, later than that. A bit later then, than that. Yeah. Did you have so, breakfast? Do you have breakfast? How do you break no, your fast? I don't do break. I don't do breakfast. And I've yeah. actually, I'm on. A, here's this is exciting. I'm on a, a 48 hour fast. Okay. And I'm going to. Uh, I should do 72 hours, but I'm going to have some dinner tonight because I'm starving. So yeah. Uh, but it's been good. I've been absolutely electric today i've been buzzing about and i've been twice as productive as usual there's a lot of focus been... when you don't eat when you're not using energy for processing food right it's amazing yeah, yeah. i'm a different yeah. person seriously i'm a different person yeah it's, it's buzzy it's 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 like taking something it's really i was just remarkable. saying how good we look for our age you and i we, we look <laughs> good don't we <laughs> don't think i don't think we're allowed we to do? say that yeah, I'm I, gonna say it. We look really good. I think we look great. We're really lively, really yeah. calm, and yeah. um, and we look great. You know. And I, I don't know how I'm. I was born 1967. You don't need to say yours. Uh, what it's are first you? First of April, 68. 68. Oh, you're a yeah. child. You're yeah, a child. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. Right. Should we get into it? So I just showed Nick this book that I'm dipping back into: molecules, microbes, and meals by um, Alan Kelly. If anybody wants to get it, it's really good. It talks about 3D printing food, um, the new um, type of extrusion of food. So what on earth that holds. It talks about wow. rotten food. I'm into rotten food, into ferments. I love my ferments, as you, as you know. I'm big into that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good one. And you gave me What Your Food Ate. By Montgomery, yeah, Montgomery. it's a magnificent book, and and, and the, the bottom line is, there's the old thing about you are what you eat, and then mm -hmm. uh, and then somebody turned that into you are what you ate, ate, exactly. which I think was really good. Maybe that was Michael yeah. Pollan who said that. It was you Michael Pollan, yeah. Was it? Yeah. You ate, ate, yeah. 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 And, um, and that's kind of what it's about. It's going into, into that in really big detail and, and talking about glyphosate and how glyphosate absolutely decimates the quality of nutrients in, 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 in plants. So if you eat plants, you, that, that will be, that will affect you. And he mentions that in 2010, glyphosate mm -hmm. got a license, got a, a patent for being an antibiotic so not only does it damage the, the 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 nutrient quality of the plants and therefore the the uh the the animals that eat the plants if you're if you're a, yeah. uh, an omnivore yeah so it means mm -hmm. it, 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 and it's the most ubiquitously used pesticide on the planet um and it ruins your microbiome because it's yeah. got this antibiotic effect so Organic, organic, organic is if you can afford it. Um, or grow is, it yourself because that's cheap as chips. I mean, um, you grow it yourself. Yeah, yeah. If you can, it's not that difficult. I'm often showing people what I've, you know, grown or made or you know, fed my dogs or whatever. And yeah. I think it's really important. You know, you can get a tomato that you've bought from the store, and you can just cut it in half, get the seeds out, give them a wash, put them on some paper, put them in the fridge, 
for about four days and they will germinate and you have loads of tomatoes coming off of each plant it's not that difficult oh, wow. patio windowsill go for it because you know what's in it and and i know i've been reading quite a few reports about the problem new zealand are having with um, glyphosates at the moment over there as well they've they use of... they use glyphosate a lot, which yeah. is, which would really surprise me because everybody thinks that, that that New Zealand is very pure and what have you. Yeah. But they're one of the hi highest users, I yeah. believe, in the country. Yeah. I love New Zealand. I went there for yeah. a year when I was a kid, and uh, I, I I've got nothing but but uh, love for kiwis. Yeah, um, but they've got a massive massive glyphosate problem. Which yeah. is such, such a shame. Yeah, it's. Pure, I was really beautiful. surprised. I was really, really shocked. So five years ago, I would have said, you know, no, they wouldn't have this sort of problem. And now I've been reading lots about it, and it's actually quite yeah. scary. I just want to say something before we get into the topic we're actually supposed to be talking oh, okay. about. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've written it down. Um, the lovely Dr. Uh, Karan. Um, he he was talking about AI. Who? Hang on. Dr. Karan. No, don't know him. It's on TikTok. Karan, K A R A N. Yeah. yeah, he's one of my favorites. He's got a great podcast. Okay. Um, he's really, really good, and he runs all. He's, he's, you know, he's got quite well known now, and he runs all his own stuff. And he's, he's just so approachable and so amazing to talk to. Yeah. And he just said he was talking about um, a narrow spectrum antibiotic abusin. Have you heard about it? Abusin. Abusin. Ab ab abusin. Sorry. Abayusin. You have yeah, to be careful created. how you say that. So, I oh know. Um, has been created by AIs. Ooh. AI technology it, to target. As, yeah. As, you will know this one. Asintobacter baunami superbug. Wow. Yeah. How amazing. And yeah, it's a nutrient. It's a nutrient, is it? No, they've actually created an antibiotic form. Uh -huh. I, I don't know how they've made it or what the, they're saying with the assistance of AI, but the, you know, all the reports are saying it's AI. Obviously it's not yeah, AI. Yeah, so. yeah, anyway, yeah. still very interesting. Um, so tonight I wanted to talk to you about um, the fact that you are, you're a vet. Yeah. You're Last into, time I looked. Yeah. You are, yeah. You're yeah. qualified. You've done all the things. You're a holistic vet. You do I am. Yeah. Um, herbal acupuncture, homeopathy. And dogs are definitely your thing. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And nutrition. I mean, I've been I've been uh, investigating and, and using raw food for over twenty five years now, and yeah. um, uh, and I think it's possibly the most profound thing that I have ever learnt. You know, uh, uh, more it's profound a, than surgery, a, more profound yeah. than antibiotics, more profound than steroids, more profound than pretty much most interventions that a vet can make uh if i had to just take one intervention to a mm -hmm. desert island it would be raw feeding as long as my dog yes. came with me obviously yeah yeah i've got two dogs i've got mouse who is two years old she is a whippet italian greyhound cross and i've got uh uh, Bluebell, who is a four-year-old, we're a bit Italian cross, and they are half sisters, and they're unbelievably great. And I was just in the fields just now, just before I jumped on, and um, it's beautiful out there, and the grass is really long, and they bounce through it like this. Yeah. Beautiful. How are their social? How is their social life? How's their social interactions? Because I've, I, we will get to it, everybody. I, I just wanted to ask this quick. Um, I'm a great yeah. believer in dogs having an incredible social life and obviously yeah. me having a lot of dogs they have an yeah. incredible social life <laughs> yeah 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 they, um, do, they do have a very big social life because we live on a little lane and so they say hello to everybody who comes past yeah and and so that that's good um i was talking to uh, to rodney habib and karen becker on tuesday on the raw pet medics i'll just give uh, a little plug if people yeah. don't know about the raw yeah. pet medics on facebook then please yeah. do uh, uh, jump into that it's a free uh, video. Uh, hour that it's a we great do. free resource yeah it's, cool. it's great sure. yeah and um and she was saying about the sociobiome is yes is, is, i'm a is, massive is... massive believer in this uh, and with the with the amount of dogs I, ha I we had 22 pets here and we have 11 now mm. it sounds crazy i know but that was just life and yeah. um 
not all with the best health and all the rest of it but you know we've all done we've done quite well at, you know yeah. some of them shouldn't have lived past two and we got to 15 years and all sorts of great things and I really do believe that a part of the their their health is to do with being with so many others and being able to be really dogs in yeah a, I totally agree moment. and there's two things going on there I think uh Emma that in the they're all swapping bugs amongst each other. So if somebody yeah. uh, gets a bit, bit, get ill or something like that, they can then uh, uh, borrow from the other guys. Yeah. And that's number one. And number two, what was I thinking? Just as you were talking, I thought, ooh, they're going to share share biome um, as well as kind of supporting each other socially. Yeah. I can't remember what the last I, the I think, point was. I think the cortisol release... Mm. um is probably dampened down quite a bit there's probably short spurts of it and less because yeah. they they are always interacting with another dog mm. and and i think their their biome is is probably i mean i'm you know i'm just about to do a few more tests um as you know the guys that treat treat therapeutics okay um, amazing really good um and i've really really enjoyed working with them and talking to them and everything and right. yeah i think if you've got quite a few dogs um, to do a test like that is quite interesting, isn't it? See, I think, yeah, I think it is. Well, I know what I was going to say. It's uh, the blue zones. You know the blue zones? Uh, yes. You know, Sardinia, Okinawa, yeah. uh, Loma Linda in California and, and various places. They've got, yeah. they've got various uh, um, uh, um, factors which are, which are similar, like they, they don't over-consume calories yeah. and they don't eat processed food. But one of the big ones is they have a very healthy sociobiome. Sociobiome yeah. being you are part of a community. Yeah. You support yeah. and you are supported by yeah. your community. And, and you know, it sounds pretty obvious when you think of it, but yeah. actually yeah. It, 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 that is key. Yeah, if you yeah. want to live to a really right old age, so. yeah. that's it. I'm a you can't believer do it on in, your own. No, and I, I believe, yeah, it, I think if you're on your own and and you only see your family once a week, if if you're mm. an elderly person, it's very hard, mm. you know, to to maybe I don't know. I would say, not saying there aren't any people who lived on their own who lived to a hundred. Um, certainly, my um, father-in-law lived to a hundred and a bit, mm. and um, you know, he had quite still quite a rich social life. Really, it's quite incredible. Yeah. But yet the same, very simply, all his life. Amazing. Interesting. And and, and that's part of the many uh problems that were generated by our response to the thing over the last three years yeah so yeah. If, yeah. if the virus didn't get you then isolation yeah could do i think could, it's hard to harm many 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 millions yeah. of people actually well i think i think actually dogs as well i think potentially dogs i don't think cats because in the uk you know a lot of them go out yeah. So I don't think much changed for them, but the social mm. avenues of dogs and their 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 um you know pet parent owner whatever not going mm. out so much yeah definitely had a major impact. I'd love to see some studies on all that, but anyway we digress. Right, we are talking about. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, we will get into it now. How many minutes? Fourteen have... minutes in, and we oh, still haven't got I could talk to the you about, point. I could talk to you about these things all day. Um, right, commercial recipes. Yeah, uh, you've been remind this... everybody. But there That's we go. What That's about. what we're, That's gonna what be we're actually talking about. That's our subject today. We could probably do about two hundred of these, and probably yeah. only can take a small section. Yeah. How um, long do you want to do, Emma? By the way, how do you want to do? Like when you get bored okay. and you want to go and eat. No worries. Okay. Cool. Let's so, let's go till we stop. Like, so up to about minutes. up to about an hour, because then I will have to run. Yeah, of course. Um. <laughs> of course. So, um, commercial recipe. Um, development creation yeah. there's different aspects in it and you definitely do mm -hmm. create recipes for pet food brands yes i do yes i do uh, I've, I've worked with with several uh companies all around the world in fact which is yeah. really exciting it's kind of yeah. sometimes difficult sourcing when you're when when you're abroad so what what i do therefore is i say i'd like a spreadsheet i love spreadsheets I'm yeah. not very good at them, but I'm, I love them. I, love yeah, I want a spreadsheet of everything you can get hold of because yeah. otherwise I make some fancy recipe and they go, oh, can't get hold of, I don't yeah. know, 
cucumber in Indonesia or, yeah. Yeah. you know, or, or I think fish is difficult, but like bizarrely to get yeah. hold of in the fresh, yeah. fresh fish yeah. is, is really difficult. So that's what I do uh, yeah. nowadays. I'll say, right, tell me everything you get a hold of. And, yeah. um, and, and that's, that's a, it sounds really obvious again, yeah. but uh, that, that's, that's great. Cause then you're, you're, you are formulating with things that they can get hold of and that they 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 have some relationship with a with a supplier somewhere along the line yeah so. I, th I think what you're also saying there is saving the um manufacturer time or the brand time by actually doing that so you like you say you could go down the route of oh, i'm going to create this recipe what do you want and go through everything and then like you know it can be really I've had it before even like in Canada or somewhere and you get the most simple thing and they say what is it <laughs> we can't yeah. get that I'm like, really why can't I know, we get frustrating. That? yeah so hence that's exactly why I yeah. do that and I always try and make my recipes as simple as possible you know sometimes they'll go yeah. up to 14 ingredients uh, yeah. and sometimes you need to go there you yeah. need to you know get your get your uh, selenium up and you get your zinc up and yeah. uh, you know vitamin e and what mm. have you but simple if you can and and this is where montgomery talking about his uh, the the what your food ate is his book mm. if I would always try and strive to 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 get regeneratively grown vegetables where possible mm. but price is a limiting factor there so i, I always say to the guys yeah, it, you know, do, do your is, best it is a limiting factor and i, I was I, that's something i wanted to talk to you about and i actually got in my my notes here um mm. it's when we i've written uh what did i say create formulations so i always say budget 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 what's your budget mm. Mm. <laughs> um create formulation obviously you know beforehand you're going to think about who's going to be buying this who is the ideal customer have you already got a customer base you know go through yeah. all these things mm -hmm. um which there's a lot goes on before you even start to you know pen to paper pen you know computer to spreadsheet whatever yeah, there's a lot yeah. that goes on in the background rather than i just want a recipe yeah there's a lot that goes on there's a lot of conversations and around ingredients and things like that's really important yeah. um and i think you know saving the manufacturer or the brand time and money is a big part of this because then you can use money that hasn't gone the part of the budget that hasn't had to be used for testing and testing and testing because you know you your um predictive analysis isn't great mm. <laughs> if, if it isn't then you you i mean i spoke to a brand three four years ago um it's a cooked pet food brand and mm. they had hired somebody to formulate for them and they had been back and forth to for analysis over 18 months i'm not even going to tell you the bill <laughs> yeah and that's when you know they don't know they haven't got the right person or they they're not on the right track but obviously we would know that we you know we'd want to go back once or twice max i wouldn't want to be going more than no, that and i, I and i guess yeah, I tell you what. Sorry, I'm interrupting oh, you there, but um, just w w as you talk, I, ideas are firing off in my in my brain. And what I tell you how I try and get around that is, I say, "Give me your dream recipe, okay?" Yeah, and that that's a great place to start. Yeah. you know, or they'll say, "We really want you know salmon, and we really want pak uh, uh, choy, or yeah. you, you know those things." So. They do a sketch, mm. and I then create, as it were, the the masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 I find that's really good because then you get them involved right at the beginning, and yeah. you get them thinking. Because I think what what's what some companies will do is, is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, just go away and give us a recipe. It's like, yeah. ah, I'm sorry, that's not how it works. Same as me. I, that that's exactly it because it's. If you're creating a brand from ground up or scratch or, or, or the range from scratch, even if yeah. it's an existing brand, mm -hmm. they're, they're, if you just give, it becomes a robotic process of there you go. And I think that's when you miss that extra flair, the extra excitement that comes into it and getting the, you know, and, and you know, obviously clearly you and I vibe off of that, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. when somebody says some extraordinary ingredient that you or i've never used and we're both like looking it up and going what's that oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That. you've got that we can use that yeah. and how yeah. exciting is that otherwise you're just going to give 
that's you know you're going to think uk food you become you know and you can think of some incredible stuff and i think if you also save brands money by your predictive an, an analysis being amazing then you can also save money and they can use those better organic or you know regeneratively farmed ingredients or one or two at least, at least in the yeah, product yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If and i think important. that's important oh that's soraya hello yeah you see she thank goodness she <laughs> likes us digressing or at least somebody likes us digressing because basically this is how we talk yeah if we get in in, in, in a room in a restaurant this is what we do. It's just yeah. like we, we go 30 different directions all yeah. at the same time. We're tangential. There's nothing wrong with I that. Get a lot of I information out of it. <laughs> um, so what I want to ask you is, you and I, we yeah. both nourish, offer our pets food mm -hmm. um, without balancing each meal, don't we? No, I don't. I don't think. Well, I don't think I've ever had a balanced meal in my life. Okay, yeah. that's I, I say that to you know veterinary gatherings and things like that. And it's mm. like, oh yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Mm. And uh, so I think it's it's a it's a really big thing because and there's two two ways to look at this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know this, but I'm just saying it so that we're, yeah, we're yeah, all, yeah. we yeah uh, yeah every all the guys are on the same page. There is a balanced meal and there is a balanced diet and That's a diet right. is a yeah. thing that happens over several weeks yeah but a meal is obviously you know it's all in one bowl and it goes down the hatch mm. and as far as dogs are concerned and um the thing the, the reason that the hills and the royal cannons and the purinas of this world produce scientifically formulated diets is that's because they have to make a uniform diet now they may mm. make 20 20 20 you know different flavors and things but they do say you know hills maintenance for example it's it's for dogs from after uh, they leave juniorhood mm -hmm. whatever you'd call that what would you call juniorhood when, when uh, adolescence. Uh, kind of adolescence yeah yeah and before they become a senior and and hills define that as about six or seven years old for goodness sake yeah. but they say you can be on this diet alone for the entire six seven years yeah and, and i just think that is a travesty because nowhere I, I always say there are no straight lines in nature yeah there's no yeah, no no, no. And, no and equally i think it's i, I think it's criminal actually mm that it's abuse i would say it's abuse, it is yeah. abuse i in, yeah. in my humble opinion it is it's it's very 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 wrong to only offer one food for years mm. and years and years i just think that that breaks every nutritional rule in the yeah. book and yet and yet that is the industry standard yeah, yeah. it's like you you go on whatever james well beloved and they say yeah you're good to go yeah that's it that's all you need because and, it's balanced I, you can feed that chicken flavor that doesn't upset your dog's tummy that's only been on since it was you know eight weeks old forever and ever mm, and ever but, and, mm. and you know it's a bit you know my children have had a diverse diet always they've they really have and they've demanded it and i'm lucky yeah. and they they don't get upset guts or any of those things that you know they ate everything from you know sushi and you know every, just all the things all the things you can yeah. think of and lots of ferments and all the rest of it and I just yeah. think to myself you know if we do that with puppies or dogs that are new to you and even mm -hmm. if they get upset tum for a few days it's not the end mm -hmm. of the world they them I say you've got to offer something at least five times before we can really say you know unless it's medically <laughs> challenged you know you know there's a real issue here but offer it four or five times before you say, oh, it gives my, my dog the upset stomach. You know, try it a few times. It's never had it in its life. Yeah. Give it a go. Yeah. It might be just a bit overwhelming. But yeah. I'm just going to say, just, just to, to get it on the scoreboard, that I will always, I think one of the most important things about raw feeding doesn't even go in the bowl. It's variety. It's making sure that you give variety. Yeah. So you can you can feed complete supposedly, we can talk about that if you like, mm -hmm. supposedly complete and balanced. 
um, raw food. But it's really important, even if you, you move within one company to, to go from their venison offering to their lamb offering to their duck offering, mm. et cetera, et cetera. And I personally prefer to feed for, for one protein type or maybe a, a, a couple perhaps for, for a slightly more extended period of maybe a week or so. Mm. Uh, because i think i probably do i mm. think i i do pretty similar actually okay and sometimes i mix it up sometimes yeah. um i'll mix everything up so there's yeah. a mixture and i i really enjoy watching um because my even though they're chihuahua i have 11 chihuahuas if anyone doesn't know <laughs> and they have quite big lumps of meat they're dogs they might be small but they are mighty and they are dogs they are not precious princesses eating mints they like to tear to chew and, um, you know, and the whole thing of, oh, they haven't got many teeth left. You know, I've got quite a few oldies here. I've got quite an aging population of chihuahuas around me now. Yeah. And they still get on with it. And they, you know, if they get the chance to snaffle off with something, they they will. And they're going to get the paws on it and pull and tear. Yeah. And, and and to me, that's the most natural way of eating. Um, bringing us back to um, formulation. So you and I, we've established we don't feed our own pets like that. So why do we... Why are we employed or paid or engaged to create recipes that yeah. are seemingly balanced? Yeah. Well, how do we do that? I mean, I've got my answer, but what would you say? Sure. It's, well, it sounds contradictory, isn't it? You know, here we are saying uh, variety and mm -hmm. not no every meal yep. needs to be balanced. And the way no. I, I rationalize this is that mm -hmm. there are some owners will find a recipe that they like and they will just stick with it now yeah. that's either owner led because because it's the cheapest or it's the one in the pink wrapper or it's they've been told by the person next door that dogs can only eat beef or something like that okay yeah so either customer driven yeah. or it is driven by the dog the dog refuses everything but lamb or yeah. everything but chicken, everything but pork, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, uh, and it is for that reason to mm -hmm. protect and to nourish as well as we can mm -hmm. those uniform feeders. That's why we formulate. What's your stock answer to that question? Um, exactly the same. Exactly the same. I'm protecting the majority of dogs that have been told by maybe the vet, the breeder, the neighbor, the, their mum fed it, their dad fed it, their uncle, auntie, whatever, that's what you feed them. And they're, own, they're going to apply their kibble rules or their canned rules to fresh feeding and raw food. Mm. And that's my concern. And that would be my only reason why I would then set about saying, yes, this is a balanced, I mean, we're all going always going to go balanced and complete you and I, we're always going to do that because none of us really know what a dog needs. Never. Yeah. We just don't, it, yeah. you know, we don't, we just don't know. Um, yeah. But we, we do have some information. We do our best. And I always say um, on the times when I've had to work with um, veterinary practices with dogs that have either had to be tube fed or they're in the ER and they cannot, for whatever reason, swallow food and get it into them the normal way. You know, we, they will blitz up Hill's science plan or something, you know, the stuff in the tin, the moose mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. But there are some progressive um, vets out there who want a fresh diet because they see this as being better and they want that blitzed up. So I can't say to a dog that's not, you know, ADR, as Jean Dodd says, ain't doing right. Um, I can't then turn around and say, Oh, let's give it a lamb chop this week and a few sweet potatoes or whatever. It, we've got to think about the balance. But let's talk about balance because mm. there is it's so contentious, the whole balance <laughs> thing. And but I feel it is important that we do approach it and explain a way why we do it because it can sound really, well, hang on a minute, he just told me this. I think if you're at home and you're following the set of rules. And there's no health issues and all the rest of it, and you are balancing well, and you are understanding all everything you need to incorporate in the diet for that week or month or whatever, and your dog's not getting overweight and they're healthy and all the rest of it. That's great. But if you want to feed 
a commercially balanced food, then, you know, why would you choose a food that we have created over Lily's Kitchen that's owned by Nestle? Why would you choose that? I mean, I know my answer why I'd choose yours. And it would be because it's fresh. And I know you've gone beyond every rule in the book to get there, right? Yeah, totally, totally. There's a couple of things that strike me and that, that, that I kind of wrestle with is, is there's the if you if you're trying to create a balanced diet for an individual dog, mm -hmm. then number one, the raw the, 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 the ingredients will vary depending on country of origin depending yes. on altitude that they've the, the, the plants or the yeah. beasts have grown um uh, uh depending on season depending on rainfall mm. all these things so there is an innate variability so the thing is even if you formulate with a computer you can't actually guarantee and you test on in january you can't guarantee that it's going to be the same in june actually yeah. but maybe this is where there's an innate variability which is maybe saves those dogs who are on a uniform diet yeah because mm -hmm. it looks the same it's in the same pack and it looks and smells mm. and everything the same but there will be seasonal vari variability yeah in addition to that in their buying practices when they create the food right yes, yeah exactly <clears throat> yeah. and but there's also the variability of different dogs okay so you've got you've got genetic effects you've got epigenetic effects yeah. and then the biggie is the bi microbiome yeah if you've got a dog who's never had an antibiotic in their life like my two i'm mm. very very proud to yeah. say they are going to have a very different biome to a dog who has had medication and again mm. talking talking to to rodney and 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 karen on tuesday on raw pet medics they were saying uh, rodney was saying he's done some some tests of, of with microbiome analysis before and after a drop on for fleas and yeah. ticks on yeah. the back of the neck that yeah. can decimate yeah. the microbiome which is amazing so yeah it's, it's insane really it's insane. Isn't that crazy so yeah. you've got variability of what's come get, what, what yeah. what's 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 landing in the bowl because of yeah. the ingredient variability and what this diet might be perfect for this dog you know one of your chihuahuas on a monday but then the the, the next dog who is related and, and and same age and what have you because they've had some treatment somewhere along the line it mm. might be inappropriate mm. for that now it's not going to give them squits or anything like that no. but long term that that it that may, does not, have an effect, may not yeah. Do. yeah they may have a higher zinc requirement yeah so how how do you ensure i mean how do you ensure that your diet when you your your recipe range when you're when someone engages you to create a recipe range is indeed complete in your head you know uh, I, that how how yeah, do you know I, that what do you do i never do single recipes for yeah. an, an, anyone i will always say we've got to have at least three recipes but if it's in commercial order. i meant for a brand if if you were doing how would you ensure for a brand? You, yeah how would you ensure it was complete uh well i'm just saying that uh, i don't think you can if, yeah. if you get really technical you can't but yeah. within the limitations that we've got i and we I are limited use... we are limited and it's frustrating isn't it sometimes it totally especially is. when in different countries as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> So what? Except so, Canada, except Canada, because they have no rules. Oh, really? It's just suggestions. Yeah, ah. I've worked there quite a bit, and uh, it's very interesting. They have suggestions. Okay, well, that's yeah, that's why the Canada Pet Food Project was set up. Actually, oh, okay. um, they yeah. they have suggestions, and basically you can do whatever the heck you like. Wow. So when everybody was crying about, I think it was. Was it Origin and Champion? I was saying, you do know these are made in Canada. I mean, they outsource some to Texas, but I was saying, you're all crying about it. I'm not saying it's a terrible food or it's a good food. Don't get me into trouble. Whoever's bought it, let's not even go there. But mm. <laughs> everybody was saying, oh, it's really terrible. I was saying, you do know it's made in Canada and there are no 
rules their exceptions. No regs. Yes, well, no right. No regs. I think I think the regs are pretty pretty lax anyway. To be yeah. quite honest, and and yeah. if, if you if you adhere to them in January, you may not adhere to them in February. So yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. so how do I do it? I will the the best uh, approximation we've got is. Can I mention brand name? Go for it. Yeah, animal diet. I use animal diet formulator ADF. Yeah, and and I've got the commercial version of that. And basically, you will you choose your ingredients, and that will that that, that so you choose eight ingredients, say to start mm. with, and you choose the proportions that you'd like to put them in. This is your first off. Yeah, and then the machine will say, uh, not enough zinc or not enough iodine and so that's where you have to start coming in with other food products not premixes not powders yeah. that comes this out is of knowledge a, isn't it as well it's a it's a knowledge base that we have we have we possess as well it's not yeah. something that you can just work out for you because it might put in you know you love a, i don't know it and put like 17 kilos of courgettes in or something silly just to <laughs> yeah to get your zinc up. yeah yeah yeah, you yeah, can have yeah. fun with it just pressing buttons. I think um, I've got it here, Animal Diet Formulator. Um, for the commercial version, it's unlimited. And you and I, as far as I know, are the only two people in the UK with it at the moment still. Really? I was the first one. Just saying. Goodness me. That's... And you, you've had it a long time as well. So unlimited, yeah. um, unlimited pet owners, professional one is only 50. Unlimited pets, um, professional is only 100. Unlimited recipes we get unlimited professional is only 250 we get 2000 ingredients whereas professional only has a thousand and we can put unlimited amounts of ingredients in ours of our own which mine is full up with which that's, is good that's not a one-time purchase no it's not one time. it's a subscription yeah. monthly subscription you have to pay yeah. you have to pay one time and then it's a subscription isn't it and um, they've got an app actually they've got an app yeah the, the adf app yeah Shall yeah um can uh shall i grab that? see if you can do it yeah I'll um also yeah. i just thought i should mention as well i use my own software on my own spreadsheets to that's where they fed it my my tagline is fed up and beyond so that's where the beyond bit would come in so i look at depletion of nutrients when food is frozen blast frozen that's where the food science bit comes in so i will add extra vitamin c for example even though dog synthesize but there is some loss so we're talking about healthy or sick dogs needing a bit more um so i think that's really interesting and i think i think knowing that yeah this is really good isn't it yeah can, can you see that yeah i think the yeah, um absolutely. how much is the um there's there's one that everyone can use isn't there the um i think i think you uh, you can use the app so, you can use so the app, you can, yeah, yeah. Well, you the beauty that of that you can go is you can take it to the supermarket. Yeah, and that when, one. You, when you're doing, I think shopping. that's really good. Yeah, I think that's excellent. So you can put in put in all your ingredients and it balance it out for you. You, you yeah. know, with a bit of skill, um, yeah. and all the rest of it. So, um, I was just looking as well. Um, so I'm, I put some notes. Obviously, budgets, unique selling points. We have to look at <clears throat> who's buying the product, mm -hmm. why we balance it. We've talked about that. Um. Test kitchen is a big thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I've got a whole process of cre if I if I'm developing, if I'm just formulating and they just want recipes and that side of it, then that's what they get. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the test kitchen is creating the recipe, going through all those steps, creating the recipe, making the recipe at home, creating a big test kitchen if they want to put you into a unit and a ghost kitchen or whatever and make a test kitchen, and then does it work? Then it's then it works on paper. Then you have to go back to costings. Oh my goodness, it's a great recipe, but it's cost far too much. Go back to drawing board, take something out, put something in, make it as brilliant mm -hmm. as you can. And you still then, you know, will then go to manufacturing processes. And there is a long process there with manufacturing, isn't there? It's not, you know, well. no, I don't, <laughs> Florian Sam procurement is something I don't do. And he, he knows it's my nemesis. <laughs> and he's, uh, um, uh, you know, jibbing me about it. Um, so, yeah, so I think, you know, when you, you go through all those processes, there's a lot to it. You know, does the dog even like it? So then you're going into the testing phase of hopefully they're going to get a few dogs, 20 dogs, 
that will try it, eat it, see if it gave it the, the shits, say if it gave it yeah, upset mm. tum, did it get made constipated, all these things when there are any adverse effects. And this is there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and I want to talk to you about testing. So um, we've got the there's um, Motfa or Motfa um, and Weedner in Europe. Um, and I was saying the sort of um, the um, analytical constituents is you can pay a lab here in the UK for those for about it's about 1200 to 1500 quid. Yeah. And it's not much to add on taurine. It's 150 quid. OK, I've just just before we move on, I was just yeah. going to say about um, costs and costing. Yeah. One of the one of the fantastic things about making a food for dogs is that by using bits of animals that humans don't really like, which there's nothing wrong with. Yeah, which there's nothing wrong with. Yeah, yeah. These, these are healthy. You know, gizzards and uh, trachea and liver. Can you believe it? Some people won't eat liver i think you know if, yeah. if if you if you like liver even a tiny bit guys who, who are watching this it is really really important for vitamin d and zinc and iron and all yeah. those things but it's super cheap and it's super super nutritious and so, underused underused and totally underused yeah. but also you can use spleen and you can use kidney and all these things because yeah. because we don't we we in the west we don't use those things they mm. tend to be cheaper and so it means you can increase the nutrient level you can increase the protein mm. level and keep the cost down which keeps yeah. the keeps the the, the um the company happy yeah, as I, well. I got i got um from the dog's butchers where i get my food my meat from is um what did she send i've got duck tongues oh nice i've got um turkey fries which is their bully bits from the men boys males yeah. um yeah. yeah um we can't with there's no brains at the moment but i've done a video on how to fry brains that was just very gently um but yeah i think there's there's all sorts of exciting proteins out there that we can use and it's i think there is also another misconception so when we talk about kibble sometimes we say Ooh, it's got all the bad bits in it and it's got their beaks and it's got this and that and the other and then other bad bits that's, <laughs> that's just that's a uh... That's yeah. uh, Joanne saying this. I often I often talk about um, feeding testicles. I'll tell you a little story, actually, just sorry to interrupt the flow. But I um, went to, I was lecturing in Lisbon in kind of 2004 or so. And uh, that we were we were all taken out by one of the local guys who knew everybody in the city. Yeah. And we went to went to one of the uh, a really kind of old fashioned um, cafe. Or no mm -hmm. cafe restaurant yeah. and he 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 ordered in portuguese i can't speak a word of portuguese and uh, he ordered and this dish came out like tapas dish and it was it was this meat which had been kind of cut into little sections he said here here try 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 and so with a with a, a cocktail stick we stabbed this thing and mm, okay a little bit chewy and he said, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? To, well, it's written <laughs> written down there. Well, actually, anyway. soft on the outside, but a bit chewy at the centre. Depends what bit you get. <laughs> it was it was beef testicle, you oh, know? And yeah. <laughs> it just kind of, it didn't, it, it didn't taste of very much. And what it did taste of was the the, the garlic and uh, yeah. lemon and things that they, they'd used yeah. to prepare. Like eating a so, snail. If you eat a snail, it just tastes of garlic and all that of stuff. Of course it does. Of course it does. Yeah. It's just a, chew, a, chewy, a chewy thing. But um, so we talked about testing. So um, one of the things I get, so this, this is said a lot to me. Mm. Oh, well, there's no point in using those softwares because when you use I, I need to explain about this so people do understand oh yeah. you know it's just usda um data or who are the other ones i've forgotten what they're called they're called hang on afco you've got afco in the states and you've got uh no i'm thinking of you know the us no mccanson widowson widowson's they use okay, that in yeah, europe yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the USDA data. So a lot of times, if you go into something, you know, yeah. like Animal Diet Formulator, where it's got USDA data, a lot of these pet food um, apps have got them. Um, and that's what they're working on. And yes, if you're just using USDA data and 
you're relying on that as a pet food formulator, then I'm afraid to tell you, you're never going to do what you think you're going to do with your formulation because you need to you be using typical analysis or typical values. And that's what we can use in the commercial version of um, ADF. So we're using an amalgamation of actual analysis where they've actually looked at a piece of beef and they've taken the analysis of several thousands of them and then they've amalgamated it into the information. And, and, and that's why if we create a recipe, we are going to have pretty near as damn it, your predicted analysis is going to be your analysis. It's pretty close. Whereas if you're just using, relying, you're someone who's relying on USDA data, just the normal stuff, it's going to be so far away mm -hmm. from what the nutrient values of a chicken in the UK is to one in Kentucky. So Yeah, that's exactly right. If you, so if you, if, if you formulate what's to say that the meat you are or anything that you're sourcing is from a similar source to what's in the in the guidelines so what you do is you it, it's an approximation yeah. it's 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 not nanogram perfect but it will but be near as damn it if you use best, that yeah there's nothing else we can do it's the best yeah. we've got and therefore your yeah. defense against you know m micro dosing micro overdosing with zinc yeah. say for years and yeah. years and years until yeah. you get more and more and more and more and more zinc is you go with down the variety route so wherever yeah. possible variety i say yeah. that all the time yeah but, um that's really really important because that will defend you you know yeah. because it, some of these diets aren't really formulated at all they're just put huh. together because it kind of looks good and the label looks good and what have you. So yeah, because you can feed you can feed that. So going back to what we hmm. where we started, I've never had a balanced meal in my life, but and I'm reasonably healthy. And but you have choice. But you do have choice. So if you food. yeah, so for example, if you have hmm. the flu, I, I worked on school dinners a bit back in the day, and okay. um, we have quite quite the guidelines in the human health sector of what you can give children, what you can't, uh, although it's what they end up giving them can be bad, but the guidelines are quite something. It's quite interesting okay. what they need and want to have. So if you ever go into baby nutrition, uh -huh. young children or adolescents or any of that, it's quite interesting, the whole thing. And um, the NHS um, diet plan, if you've got someone who is really, really overweight, if you look at their diet plans, it's very, it's fascinating. Anyway, I digress. But anyway, so. The thing is, is if I have the flu mm -hmm. and I don't eat anything for four days, and then after those four days, I typically will crave citrus. I will want as many oranges and orange juice and vitamin C type things I can get down me. It's, I've always been like it. And I have the choice to say, oh, whoever's going to the supermarket or going to the shop or whatever, go pick an orange out of my garden if I was in California, mm -hmm. you lucky mm -hmm. things. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I can do. Whereas your dog, is relying on you to know that it's looking yep. for, for that. And yep. that would be my only concern there. So the reason I would create a balance and then go beyond, because there's there's no taurine um, requested or vitamin C or anything like that with the FEDIAF guidelines, for example. Mm -hmm. So you and I will make sure there's this taurine in meat. It's a no-brainer. We don't really have to add. I mean, I, I saw a raw cat food recently where they were adding taurine to, and I'm going. Surely, when they did the analysis, there was enough in the meat. It Unless was, it was for taurine. the label. It was just for the label because yeah. people, you know, if you don't know much about nutrition, you do know about cats and taurine. But yeah, but taurine. The name gives it away. Taurine, as in Taurus the bull. That's where yeah. they got it. I think it was from bile. Bile, where they where they first found taurine initially back in the day, and we're talking kind of I don't know the eighteen eighties or something. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, so the choice you're, you're saying the choice thing that we can choose. You know, if you really fancy some citrus, or you really fancy some liver, or something that's, like that. Yeah, that's my only. Argue, that's my argument. Is, against when when somebody says to me, "Oh, but we've never eaten a balanced meal in our lives," and blah, blah blah, and I say, "That's not strictly true because we are guided constantly." subliminally about you know what kids get to eat at school what babies can eat the the, the um what are they called the healthcare 
person comes around when you've had a baby and tells you what when they can start eating solids or, or yeah or the the one after that health you know and visitor. yeah health visitor yeah and they'll say to you you know or oh, they can eat this now and they can eat that and you and you're and there's a lot of people a lot of mums out there and dads that are really terrified and guided by this you know the way i mean i did it a little bit differently i breastfed both my kids for a year um each and they grabbed food off the plate when they were ready and that's how they ate not everybody's going to do that they didn't have a special they did have a special bath florian did but he never went in it he just went in the big bath with me you know we i you know we did things probably a little bit differently to the norm but you there's a lot of pressure on you to oh it's about time you stop bottle feeding now and it's about time you the dummy away and, and there's a lot of constraints and i think there is in the pet food world as well where yeah but you're told thing, how many meals to feed a day and stuff yeah, like that i think the thing with that though is that you and i can choose but unless you put down a dozen bowls for the dog to choose what it wants you know lamb ostrich pork duck nobody's going to do that so no. to a certain extent you 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 are directing the the food choices of your dog and I, I i don't know how you get around that how well how would you tackle that one well the thing is is you know we if if our dogs appear well and they're eating a diet that is typically complete and balanced and mm. as i like to say fed up and beyond because i will go beyond yeah um but the thing i will do with my pets is is they have enough variety to be able to make those choices. So their food is not in a minced and mushed up. I don't blend the vegetables. It's steamed. It's yeah, I never cook fats. It's just, you know, it's just there's lots of herbs, loads of spices. They eat chili and garlic on the regular. It's just how we we do it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but if I watch them eat, I what I can see, why is that one only eating broccoli? Why is that one choosing broccoli over that yeah, juicy yeah. bit of pork or beef or chicken or turkey or, you know, wherever we're going to or the turkey fries mm. or whatever? Why are we going for just broccoli? And mm. interestingly, just to down, like not going into the whole self-selection thing, but Captain Sparkles, one of my little chihuahuas, um, he got bitten on the head by a gnat. Right. And we haven't had anything like that happen for I don't know how long. A gnat. Yeah. There's, we've got apparently 30% more uh, gnats in the UK at the moment for some strange reason. Probably. Yeah, it's a really bad year for fleas and ticks. I didn't yeah. know about I didn't know about the gnats. But, yes. Um, so yeah, and I we saw the gnat sitting on top. He's he's got very fine. He's, he's got not much fur. You know, sort of very thin sort of fur, mm. like just a thin covering. What would you call it? Fine, silky sort of fur. Anyway, and I saw this. Downy. Yeah, and I saw this old gnat big old gnat sitting on there and he's got a little bump and today um leah iomi who's from doggish she's probably on here somewhere hi leah she is um, she is there yes she's she's really lovely and she um she um sent me um when i lost one of my dogs she was really sweet and she sent me a whole like 12 um different herbs from this place leah i can't remember what the company is called but you say anyway so i've got what is it called mint spicy spicy mint spicy oregano one of the plants she said and it is you you taste the oregano and it's spicy on your tongue captain sparkles has been chomping his head off on that today mm. okay. like no tomorrow wow Since he got so the thing it, it got sort of a bit raised yesterday and he's been chomping on that i've never seen him touch it in his life so do you put extra spicy oregano in his food for a few days you don't know because he can choose it okay choose it in the bowl no he can or... choose it outside he's choose it choose outside it. so you've got it growing outside now, oh yes that, sorry that is a brilliant idea yeah. i think so they eat all the whole... mud and the clay so we've got a clay garden two clay guard different clays yeah on the, on the earth yeah which is obviously pesticide free yeah and then he will eat it and then lick lick the earth i just I think, think it's a really it's smart dog brilliant. Yeah, having Mark a Mark. having a herb garden for the dog where they can free choose herbs. So you've got yeah. mint and you've got parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme out there. <laughs> can you not um, sing that? <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's just a fantastic list. It trips yeah, off, the, it off the off the tongue. Um, 
Simon and Garfunkel, by the way, if you haven't heard yeah. it. Uh, oh, Scarborough Fair. Yeah. By Simon and Garfunkel. Are you going? Wonderful. Am I going to Scarborough Fair? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'll tell you where I am going. And we're just in our last five minutes yeah, here. Yeah, Emma, so if we have rambled any, a lot. Yeah. Really pressing. Now's the time. But yeah. uh, I'm going to Groundswell. Are you going? Uh, regenerative Agriculture Festival next week with my old mate Charlie. I thought you weren't going. And... I didn't realize you were going. That's amazing. Oh, Good. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, listen, I'm like a kid in a toy shop. Amazing. It's, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And, we, and there's going to be, I don't know, 5,000 or so people there. And yeah. we're going to talk about, uh, about regenerative agriculture. Yeah. Um, Nicole Masters, who is the, 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 the queen of soil, is going to be there. Really excited. I've just read her book. And yeah. it's, it, it blew my mind completely. If you're a real soil geek, that's the book for I you. I am a bit of a soil geek, yeah. um, So that's, that's amazing. And Zach Bush, oh. who, is, who is bigger than Elvis Presley. Mm. Uh, in in my world, and mm. he, he's going to be there, so it's going to be amazing to see. You got him. Jeremy Clarkson as well. Is he? Is he going? I haven't actually looked at the lineup. I just uh... no, he's definitely going. He's talked about it. Yeah, I, I yeah, I tried to see if I could um, if I could wangle it to come to come down, and mm. uh, uh, jury's out at the moment whether I will. But um, okay. amazing. Um, you just have to fill me in and tell me everything because oh, I'm totally, really totally, totally, jealous I'm, that you're going. So excited. So, um, has so, anybody got any exciting questions or should we go through should I go through them after? Go through them after. Yeah. Probably, well, after yeah. we finish. Yeah. I'll go through them and have a look. Did anyone say anything exciting? If, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna have yeah. to run at seven. Yeah. You run, you go and eat. Go and through you tell me. Yeah, but we got we got four minutes. We're good. We're we good. did I think we did quite you know, we stayed on topic quite well. Can somebody no, give us some thumbs up? No, I think we stayed stayed on topic really well for us. Well, we well, are quite tangential, aren't we? We uh, we did thirteen minutes completely off topic before we even got into it. Uh, but I don't think anyone um, missed it between me and you. But <laughs> they're too they're too polite, far too polite. No. Um, so um, yeah, any 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 announcements? Anything you've got to say? Uh, I'm going to be doing a talk at. Helsinki in Finland yeah. University in the middle of September. Uh, check it out. It's uh, I've got the website. I think the link is really uh, big, long. But if you go yeah, to... Yeah, they're really long, those ones. If you look at the... If you do a search on dog risk, one word, seminar in Helsinki, dog risk, seminar in helsinki 15th and 16th of september i'm going to be talking um uh there and i'm really excited if you're if you're a raw or fresh food geek for dogs uh that is the place to be helsinki yeah. it, it basically the whole world goes there for september and it's it's it's, it's fantastic and helsinki so if, I don't, so if i don't come to groundswell and I'm going to try and try my best to come to Helsinki this year because I've been doing it. Do. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to try to do that. Otherwise, I'll see you at the Brighton Barkery in Brighton. Oh, yeah. What day is that? Sorry, is she? 23rd and 24th of September. We're going to be is there it? down in Brighton. Sure it's yeah. Later. Hang on. Let me is look. it? I Did I get it, it wrong? 29th. Hang on. Well, well, maybe it is. To, uh, maybe she's September. here. She'll tell us. I'm sure it's 23rd and 24th. You might be right. You might be right. Is it a Friday? Am I right? right. (laughs) I'm 23rd and 24th. Yes. Yeah. Oh, look. Sarah Najafian from the Pet Emporium saying, More lies with Emma for sure, please. That's very, do you know what? That was great. That was very flattering that one person enjoyed it. I'm really pleased. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) Sarah Najafian, the Pet Emporium up in Glasgow. There you go. He, she's a, she's she's an incredible uh, raw feeding advocate, and her emporium and shop brilliant, brilliant oh, stuff. Okay. Some, great, great, some, great, great, great. You know, some great people out there doing great things. Keep it they up, totally everyone. Are. Totally are. Really keep it up. It's amazing. Um, yeah. The only thing, my only announcement is that um, this is my first live in a long time. And it's too um, long, lovely, too long. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, winkling me back out the cave as well. 
No, total pleasure. And it's really good. I um I finally on my website I have finally married my natural canine kitchen free resource to what I actually do professionally because I've always done that as a quiet word of mouth thing. Yeah. But um when people want capital raises and things, they need you to have some sort of profile on your website. So yeah, and it's it really flashy. Perfect. Yeah, it's <laughs> well, a really like really nice website. What's the what's the address? Uh, the natural canine kitchen.com dot com. Oh, you got yeah. dot com. That's very clever. Well done. Yeah. 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 The yeah. natural canine kitchen.com guys. Uh, check it out. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lovely website and I'm really fussy about websites. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, I, um, yeah. I, and so what's next for all pet and medics next week? RPM, yeah. uh, next week. Uh, the honest answer is I don't know. Okay, fair enough. You're on. What day are you on? We just make it up. Tuesday? Uh, it's on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Raw Pet Medics. I don't know what's on next, but my, my wife has just informed me. We're, we're, we're getting a lovely guy called Matt Muir on the 4th of July. She's just informed me that Arthur, our son, who's leaving primary school no, uh, yeah no. i kid you not i know it's amazing isn't it no, he's, he's leaving primary he's school no. and and they're having a kind of a, a kind of a little get together yeah. with, with him and his him and his buddies so i'm not going to be able to, to make the fourth of july i haven't even told connor and now. brendan yet so ooh, which is which is uh, I really feel bad, but I think what I'm going to do, Matt Muir, who's from Australia, he makes makes raw food in Australia, really, really on the ball guy. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to just move him. I'll move him to I September. Think, I think or it's kind of like going to have to happen. Are you going to have a break for the summer, you guys? RPM? I've, well, we we went to Sri Lanka for three weeks, and so I didn't do raw pet medics for three weeks. Yeah, noted, noted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. You look like you had a terrible time. I oh, it was heaven. I thought Ellie's I pictures. What, it looked rough, terrible. I, I, I bet it was awful, back, wasn't it? <laughs> I came back a new man. I tell you, oh, I didn't realise I was quite so wiped out. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I came back a new man. I was going to do chime into Raw Pet Medics, but I just thought, bugger yeah, it, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I just I was so relaxed after a week. It took me a week to wind down. Only a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was a I was that a was wreck. good. That was I good. Was a wreck. I just wanted to say, um, for those of you that don't know, obviously we've mentioned um, Nick. We people can contact you as well if they want. Yeah, you yeah. Don't just do commercial formulations to uh, No, holistic vet, holisticvet.co.uk is the website. All the deets are there. You're very welcome to have a look. I'm happy to to talk to anybody pretty much about anything with regard to food and dogs. Yeah. yeah. So and Ellie so, Thompson is your lovely wife. Yes. And she is derma dog, if anyone's she is derma dog. Look at this. This, this, uh, this yeah, is her I mean, insect event. Talking of talking of um yeah, dogs getting nice. bitten yeah. by midges, this yeah. is really nice. And if you look yeah. there, you can see contains lemongrass, yeah, rose geranium, and, and sea, cedar. cedar cedar wood oil yeah. okay yeah so, very good and i you know i use all the sprays those ladies that are um perimenopausal or menopausal i use that you probably heard me speak about it a million times i use this spray for Which one? when i have a hot flush this one. Oh, this really oh wow because she I does was a... talking about it oh bless yeah, you That's really I, want, I want her to bring it out as a hot flush bag because it's so, oh, I want, wow. like yeah a little handbag one i can put in and just it's brilliant. Oh, wow. Bless you. That's really, yeah. really good. I, yeah. I'm going to tell, tell her that. Yeah. Um, and that will really make her day. She does a cooling one. Uh, yeah, as well. she does a cooling one. She does glossy. Oh, yes. She's done the calming one. But this yeah. one, for some reason, for me, I say just everyone get them and try them. I tell everybody I come across. <laughs> Bless you. Do it. It's really good. And you know what, as well, the the, the vets where I work um, with, with them quite a bit, they get covered in fleas quite a lot in All practice right. and, yeah. and get bitten. And um, I've said to one of them in particular, get this and just rub it down your legs. Yeah. She's done wonders, yeah. Totally, yeah, yeah. And up your arms. You and practice them. and you get, yeah, they just get down your top and they have to go and get changed, yeah. It's worked really well. There you go. You are you're a, a genius. You're I a genius. Know, I, I never, never would have thought of that. But that's Yeah, that's, what if your hot brilliant. flushes? No, no. And tell, it will make. Tell the ladies. Tell all the ladies. It will make. Okay, for hot flushes. <laughs> 
Ah, Those and ones that start around your necks, ladies. Those ones. You know the ones I mean. <laughs> I know. One last thing. One yeah, last on. thing is uh, Edition Dog is, I think, the 29th of August. It's a really great show. It's okay? August. They're oh, not that's paying me. Quick. I know. They're not paying me to say that. I just think it is a great show because everybody yeah. there is on the same page as us. Okay? So it's brilliant. Lots of like-minded folk. And uh, we will be launching the Holistic Vet Shop, which is an online shop, uh, in time for that, for in time for Edition Dog Live. So well, watch about this space. Time, we're, gonna, we're gonna be selling lots of amazing Nick, about yes. time. I know, I know. I it's mean just, about time. I don't I mean, like being all commercial. Dr. Judy Morgan is some is, is um, I'm I'm I think I'm on. Oh, I'm in. I'm not, she's interviewing me next week. I forgot. Oh, right. Okay. Next Thursday, I'm over there. Okay. Um, okay. But she is, she's like, you know, she's got the shop and she, she's offering the solution because that's what people always say to me. Yeah, but how much shall I get? What do I do? And that is nothing about being all commercial. It's about offering that one stop solution. And I think it's really important for people here. That's it. It's, 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 yeah. it's, a, it's an educational, uh, going to be an educational site as well. It's going to be saying, we use this. In, in this scenario and it contains this which is great yeah. for this and this and this without breaking uh, veterinary medicine director yeah, yeah. directives and all that kind yeah, of stuff we want to be doing that no we don't we're going to be no we don't yeah. so yeah. uh so that's really really fun and ellie's doing it so it looks amazing she's a she's a graphic designer she's a computer yeah, graphic she's designer, good. digital designer and so when you if you go to uh dermadog the website you'll see it's really well produced and she's doing the same job in a different way yeah all for the packaging and labels is brilliant so I, I look forward to getting a package if i order oh. something and i bet it'll be really nicely packed and everything mm -hmm. yeah well. she, she does that on our it does it on our kitchen table that stuff i kid you not it's, yeah, it's a big kitchen table i'll tell you what though <laughs> pretty lucky there do you know what i mean doing all right oh, yeah clever lass i know i know mm. and she can cook amazing yeah how lucky am i how lucky am i <laughs> she is a really good cook actually i'm really sorry ramble you go eat no Thank I'm, you so yeah yeah i like we could be here all night yakking about all this stuff oh, couldn't we like, you know we never it's been stop. really good it's been yeah, really it's, good and we you know we only talked about one book which i think is really good we didn't go into podcasts we didn't go into any of that so we've done really well Have i have to hold back books. Because otherwise I get a hard time. Everybody gives me a really hard time because they say, well, oh, I can't cope. My bedside table is going to collapse if you recommend another book. Look, we don't know how long we're on the planet for. You've got to get through it. So many books, so little time. Yeah, we've got a lot anyway. of time. It's just don't watch telly. Just get on with it. Yeah, quite. <laughs> great listen right, emma up. that was really really great i really appreciate it um uh and um yeah it's great it's really great to chat uh much love to you and to yep. everybody yeah i've learned this in sri lanka that you would do this everywhere all the time and it's really useful i like it actually and yeah. so uh many many thanks to you are you going to disappear or shall i i'll i'll you, I'll, you cut I'll, us press, off. I'll press the button hang on there and and uh, I'm going to say goodbye, everybody. Thank much you very love. much. Thanks, Thank you for tuning Emma in. And thanks for your time. See you soon. See bye. you soon. Bye.